Wolfgang Labuda is never happier than when he can take to the air. He's the director of an aircraft manufacturing company, and today he's flying a new Aerolite 120 for the first time, an ultra lightweight aircraft. He's at an airfield in the German state of Mecklenburg-Vorpommern that's having an open house today. His wife Tilda is following everything from the ground. The colors look great, she says. Equipped with a small engine and fuel tank, the aircraft trundles along at 90 kilometers per hour. It can fly for up to two hours at a time. The great thing is you're at the mercy of the elements. And on the basis of what you've learned, you then have to control the aircraft to ensure you end up safely on the ground. It's a challenge, but it's fun. There's always a bit of adrenaline involved, a great feeling. His Greenbird, as it's called, is one of a number of aircraft on display here, but it's attracting by far the most attention. It's an uncomplicated design, and anyone with a pilot's license for lightweight recreational aircraft is allowed to fly it. I find it fascinating that they can all get airborne with no problem at all, whether it's the big heavy airplanes or lightweight aircraft like this one. It's cool to glide through the air and then look down and see all the earth below and everything looks so beautiful. When I get into a plane, I can just switch off and look down at the world. You get a whole different perspective and a sense of freedom. Engineer Otto Lilienthal wrote aviation history 125 years ago in 1891, when he became the first person to fly 20 meters through the air in a self-built glider. Many more flights followed. Lilienthal's home in Anklam in Mecklenburg-Vorpommern has dedicated a museum to the German aviation pioneer and shows reproductions of his flying machines. He constructed 18 different gliders from materials such as willow rod, bamboo, linen and wire. He was inspired by the way birds fly, storks in particular. Lilienthal made his first attempts at flying at age 43. Just five years later, he died from injuries sustained when his glider crash-landed. Otto Lilienthal cracked the secret of the wings. From today's perspective, when you look at what modern planes still owe to Lilienthal, then it's the physics of the wings. We still describe the wings of an Airbus using the same terms Lilienthal came up with 130 years ago. Back to Wolfgang Labudde. His company, Fierwerk, is located just 40 kilometers as the crow flies from Otto Lilienthal's birthplace. The Aerolite 120 is assembled here by hand. Built on a frame composed of aviation-grade aluminium, the plane's wings are covered with high-tech polyester fiber from the United States. Fierwerk has created 12 different designs. Okay. It's a great feeling. You open a box, take out the individual parts and work with them. You must be sure that what you're doing is right, and in the end, you sit in the thing and fly it. Seeing the world from a bird's eye view is something that also fascinates his wife, Tilda. Though she doesn't have a pilot's license herself, she's long been entranced by the magic of flying. We have great respect for Otto Lilienthal and his pioneering vision of learning how to fly. We're carrying that on a little with our style of flying. People can still be hungry for adventure without being reckless. The Aerolite and Otto Lilienthal's models have in common that they offer pilots that thrill of adventure. But these days, planes are more than a hobby for thrill-seekers. They have, of course, become an essential mode of transport as well.